I'm Steve from This Hook With Cars and today I got my Blue Eddy AC200 Max. This is a 2000 watt battery powered inverter generator. It has just over a 2000 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery and has a built in solar charge controller so that you can charge it off of many sources including solar panels. This is one of Blue Eddy's largest portable solar generators. They do have a couple models that are 3000 watts as well, but I think this is the most portable of the large ones. You can take this with you and power your home appliances, but I have something much bigger planned for the Blue Eddy. I'm going to integrate it into my Overland camper and use it to both store energy and to power all the devices in the truck. Before I get to that, let's take a look around it. On the front we have the standard things that you would expect. We have a cigarette car outlet type adapter here. This I am told is used to power things in motorhomes. I haven't ever seen anything like this here in the United States so this might be an overseas uh, adapter there. Same with these ones right here. These supply 12 volts at 10 amps. Then we do have a USB-C output and four USB-A outputs. Here we have four standard 20 amp 120 volt AC outlets as well as 130 amp. This is the same plug that you would find in RV parks which makes this really easy to plug your motorhome into this device if you want to shut your generator off and have noise free power in your motorhome. You can use one of these. It will power one air conditioning unit. If you have more than that you'll need another one of these. But this could be a good solution to get you through the night where you don't have to run your generator but you could keep your heat your battery charger, other things like that running over the night quietly. Also on the top there are two wireless charging ports. Just set your phone right here and it will automatically charge those up. This is a nice addition. I haven't seen this on any of the other solar generators. All of these are typical things that you would see on a lot of these solar generators. But over here on the side is where things really get interesting. This is where you would plug in your normal wall adapter you want to plug this in at your house and recharge it. That's the port you'll use right there. This here is the DC input if you're using solar panels or any other DC source. This comes with a car adapter so you can charge it off of your car. You can use any DC input all the way from 10 volts to 145 volts and the charge controller inside will automatically handle the voltage and charge it appropriately. Well this is where things get really cool. Right here are battery expansion ports. So after I have this installed if I find out that I need more battery capacity to run through the night when I'm not using the solar panels I can buy their battery packs, connect them up to these ports and double or triple the amount of runtime that I have with this. Before I get to installing this into my overlander I want to take it back, hook it up to my motorhome and show you a couple other cool features about this solar generator. This is my bus. This is a Bluebird Wander Lodge from the mid 1980s. It's 40 feet long and has three rooftop air conditioning units. Normally I am boondocking with this bus, which means I am not plugged into shore power. That's because I use this to tow cars to car shows and racetracks across the country. Normally what I would do if I don't need a whole lot of power and I don't want to run the main generator, I will connect up my little Honda generator. This is enough to keep the batteries charged and run the refrigerator. Both the Honda and the Blue Eddy have the 30 amp plug. That's a standard RV plug. This bus is so big that it takes two of these plugs to run it or one 50 amp plug. The Honda is equipped with a construction style plug. So in order to use the RV plug with the Honda, I have to have an adapter. The Blue Eddy, however, I can plug my RV plug directly into. Both of these units are just as powerful. Although the Honda does have the 30 amp plug on it, it's not actually able to fully utilize that without being paired to a second Honda 2000 generator. Using these parallel operation plugs, you can plug the two Honda generators together and then you can get the full 30 amp output for your RV. So switching from a Honda EU2000 over to the Bluetti 
AC200 Max. You're not losing anything except for the noise. And if you pair the Blue Eddy with your solar panels, it may run just as long as the Honda would. I'll connect the bus to the Blue Eddy and I'll show you a couple more features. To show you this, I do need to turn the Blue Eddy on. However, this is just in a standby mode. It's not actually outputting any power to any of the outlets yet. We are now inside my bus. I've left it completely original from the way it was in 1985. When I bought this in 2009, all of the water pipes had frozen. I did have to go through and fix all of the plumbing on here. I used this a lot for several years. I haven't used it very much recently. I'd like to get back to restoring this. Now that the Blue Eddy is outside in standby mode, I'm going to launch the app and I will hit connect. It will connect using Bluetooth to my solar generator. This is everything that we can see on the screen outside on the solar generator. We can also change all the settings, see how much power it's using, and turn on and off the outlets from here. Let's go ahead and turn on our RV plug. Now it's providing power to the bus. So let's see if it's powerful enough to run this rooftop air conditioner. Here's the control center for the bus. Up here above the driver's seat, we have control for all three air conditioners. Let's turn the front one on. It's powering up. Seems to be blowing cool air. The Blue Eddy is only powerful enough to run one of these. Turn that off and try some other devices. Another neat thing you can see from the app is how much power you're using. So right now I have a fan in the back running. It's taking almost 200 watts of power to supply that and the other things on the bus that are running right now. This will be a very important feature for my overlanding vehicle because it is built to be as efficient as possible to completely boondock without being plugged in. So I want to keep everything as efficient as possible so that the batteries last a long time. This bus has a built-in blender. Let's turn that on, see how much power it adds. Now with the blender and the fan, we're using about 400 watts. Turn the blender off. Going back down, just under 200 watts running that fan on the rooftop air conditioner. Now that we've seen how all of this works, let's get it installed into the overlanding vehicle. If you haven't been following along, this is my overlanding vehicle. This is the shop truck version of the M35A2. In previous videos, I installed a shore power plug for this truck, so I could just plug this plug into an outlet on the Blue Eddy. That would allow me to power everything inside the truck just like a regular generator would. However, that wouldn't be using this device to its full potential. So I want to take this and install it inside. Everything inside of here is pretty much how we left it last time, except for the addition of this really cool blanket that I got. These are available on my store. Just click below the YouTube video. So that you can see what's happening, I'm going to temporarily set the Blue Eddy up on top of this cabinet so that you can see what it's doing. Right now, all of the lights and outlets on this vehicle are being powered by this 300 watt power inverter. To switch it over to the Blue Eddy, all I have to do is move the plug that's plugged into the inverter over to the Blue Eddy, and I'm going to do that with a simple extension cord. The inverter is now unplugged. I have plugged into that extension cord which is now plugged into the Blue Eddy. I'll turn it on. We do have to wait for a short boot sequence. And when I turn on the AC outlets, we should see the lights turn on. There we go. At this point, I could just shove this under the bed or put it down on the floor, let it power everything in the truck, but I would have to come back and recharge it in between trips. That is definitely less than ideal. Out of the box, we get three different ways to charge the unit. This is the wall unit. So you can take this, plug it into your house, charge it pretty quickly. We also have an adapter for a car, so we can use a cigarette outlet to charge it. And this one lets us connect solar panels up to it. One neat thing about this unit is that you can plug in the wall outlet as well as a DC source and charge it up very quickly. 
the fan on the AC brick is pretty loud, not something that you would want to have running when you're sleeping. So I'm going to opt for doing DC only charging. I could just connect my solar panels to the solar generator. Looks like right now we're at about 132 volts of input from my solar panels into the solar charge controller. I, however, am going to charge it in a different way. One of the outputs from the solar charge controller is going down to this cigarette outlet type adapter. This is running at 24 volts. And this is what I'm going to use to charge my solar generator. All I have to do is plug in one end of this cable to the cigarette outlet and the other one to the solar generator. Now that that cable is connected to the appropriate port on the solar generator, we can see that it is taking in 220 watts from my solar panels. And the truck currently is using about 90 watts. Right now, if we take a look at our DC input, we can see that we have an input voltage of 26.6 volts at a power rating of about 220 watts. One of the benefits of wiring it this way is that when I am running my truck engine or I'm plugged into shore power, which will run this battery charger right here, that will also be outputting DC and charging up the solar generator. So as I'm driving to the campground or the area where I'm going to camp, it will also be charging this up from the engine. I don't have to worry about the solar generator draining the batteries on the truck because my solar charge controller takes care of that. If the battery voltage drops too low, it will cut off the output power coming out of there and the solar generator will no longer be charging and draining down the truck's batteries. That leaves me with enough voltage to start the engine up it should I need to. This should not be a problem during the day though because the solar charge controller charges the truck batteries individually from the output to the rest of the vehicle. At this point, I can tuck the solar generator under the bed and this will greatly expand my power capabilities inside this vehicle. From my phone outside the vehicle, I can turn on and off the power so I can instantly turn the lights back on when I come back to the vehicle at night. And while I'm in the vehicle, I can bring the app up on my phone and see how much power I have left and how much power I'm using. Let's do a little experiment. Right now we're using 52 watts of power. Let's turn on the microwave and see how much power that adds. With the microwave running, we're up to 1,245 watts. That's only about half of what this solar generator can put out. For the equipment and lighting that I will have installed in this truck, this inverter is all that I will ever need. Depending on how much sunlight I have and how long I want to boondock will determine if this battery is enough or if I need to expand it with the expandable battery packs. I have a link in the description below if you want to get one of these. I also have all the parts to work on the next step of the plumbing system, so a video on that will be coming soon. I also have some upcoming camping trips where I will get to try this out, do some tests to see if I do need a bigger battery or not. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.